This is bushcraft bag number two. Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and this is the second bushcraft bag as we look at five bushcraft bags and test out five bushcraft bags. So this is a 10 part series. I've already reviewed bag number one and tested it out. There are links to those two videos below. Um, I'm not making a ton of changes from the bags I built in the past as I go through this process because I just want to kind of test them out. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to take all the bags, combine the best features of it together and make probably the ultimate bushcraft backpack and the ultimate bushcraft haversack. But let's take a look at what I have in this bag. We'll talk about it. I'll put a full list of the items down below in the description section if you're interested. And as the rain kicks in here, we may have to pause and come back to this video. But anyhow, let's take a look at it. Bushcraft bag number two. Let's start off and talk about the bag. This is a Polish bread bag, and I picked this up at an army surplus store. In New England, they have one here called Army Barracks, and it's literally a mix of surplus and also stuff from like Rothko. They also carry like all kinds of knives, survival tools. They carry airsoft stuff. So this is a legit Polish bread bag. Now you look at it, you're like, well, so what do they do with it? Well, apparently they carried bread in it and other things because it's got a bunch of compartments. These are like seven or eight bucks. You can pick these up online. Definitely a great bag. It's got a lot of storage and organization inside for the size of the bag. So here's the front. The clips are kind of interesting. So you run this strap um, through this little kind of roller and then it kind of pops up and locks into place. And then this bottom section goes in like that. And you do obviously that on the same, on this, uh, this side as well. So a flap that goes over the top. Here's your side. There's nothing that um, is on the side, but you can see in a little bit. Other side, same thing. And then flip it around back. You can see on mine, I've got a pair of gloves. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can also see we've got a handle up here to carry it. And then we've got some D-rings, metal D-rings, and then the clip for your strap. And then I threw on a little um, a little leather strap here as well. And then you've got these um, this webbing section here. So you could attach a couple extra things onto that as well. And then here's what the strap looks like. You can see it's doubled up there. So you can make it longer, shorter, whatever you want. And I will say for an old school bag, it is quite thin. Um, quite thin and small, but it's very comfortable. It's uh, it's not a very hard material and especially doubled up. It's it's actually based on the weight of what you could put in this bag. This uh, strap works just fine. Now, the other thing to show you on the bottom here is you do have these straps. So you could put something on the bottom. Basically, you're gonna loosen these up like this, All right? Put your item underneath and then cinch these, cinch these down again. And you could probably put a bedroll or something like that. I think that's probably gonna be a little bit bulky or it's got to be really thin um, if you put it on there but you could uh, you know throw a windbreaker or something like that on the bottom as well i don't use the bottom of this um these bottom straps very much but good to know you can store gear there all right so opening it up pull this out pull this out you can already see the little metal buckle here that helps basically cinch things down so you got that organized there it's got this front little pot, these front pocket section here. So I've got a Sharpie in there, which I think is always a useful tool out in the woods. If you got to write an emergency note, write notes for something, that's good to have. I've got also in here, see if I can get this out pretty easy. Leatherman Juice. So this is the Juice S2. A lot of tools in this guy. Um, I'll zoom out here or roll in some footage so you can see all the different tools on this. But this is a small, lightweight Leatherman. I picked this up at an REI garage sale for like 10 bucks or something like that. So I, those two are in there. And then also the last thing I've got in this front section is a little right in the rain uh, bullet pen. So this is good for all kinds of weather and you can write upside down with it. So uh, just a way to, to write. I've got a little journal in there. I'll show you in a second. And over here, let me close this up for one sec. So what we've got here is basically my utensils. It looks like a Swiss army knife, but you can see folded out. You've got a spoon and then over here, See if I can, yeah, get it right there in the middle. We've got our fork, as well as a bottle opener there. And then as you would expect, you've got a knife here with a little bit, it's not a very sharp tip there, so sort of dulled out tip. Um, I will say, I've used this one other time. I will say that uh, we'll test it out and see what we think, but the spoon is, it's not huge, it's pretty small. And then obviously if you need a knife and a fork at the same time, not gonna work out so well. So that's a downside of this, but I do think it's kind of a cool concept of a tool and it's old school. Lord and Field, I believe that's who it's from, is the, uh, the Battle Box kind of like Bushcraft brand. Now you can see as I open it up, I've got a knife on top. I've got this strap and I've got this clip so that it'll stay in place. This is 
the SE Zen Kudo and S35 VN. So great, great tool. Um, comes in the, it's not a Kydex, but it's a very heavy duty sheath. Just throw that on your belt. It's also got the loop here. So you could put it around your neck as well. This is a, a really nice knife. Um, when they came out with some of their um, higher end steels and the recontoured handles for some of their original knives, this is one that they made available. And I just think it's a really cool knife. Compact enough. It's definitely a four finger grip if you hold it like this and even like this as well. And just allows you to bear down. Doesn't have a sharpened spine, but it's a, it's a nice size knife. My favorite knife as far as this size all time is the RB3 from SE. And this is a very similar feel with a very nice steel, obviously S35 yen. So there's one cutting tool. And this is the other cutting tool. Now this doesn't actually fit in the bag, but I often run it like this and then fold the top over or I run it through this strap on the back. So I've got it with me, but this is the Yukon Hawk from Tops. As you can see, we've got the attachment point so you can put that on your belt. Take off the mask here so you can see what that looks like. I have used and tested this. Um, very thin profile, but a nice chunky handle. So when I hold this, I'm like, yeah, that's a really, it's just comfortable in hand. And it's relatively lightweight compared to a larger ax. Thin profile that way. You can see, you can do some hammering with that. We'll talk about that in a little bit made in Ohio, does have that nice sweep on the blade. So it's not a flat blade um, as far as your angle compared to a lot of other hatchets and things like that. So between the uh, the Zancudo right here and this ax, I've got my, you know, for smaller, more detail cutting and then for some more large aggressive cutting. All right, so I'm gonna undo this strap, which again, keeps things organized and you'll see the different organization as I go through this. So starting on top here, this is a cool little pouch I got from Lord and Field. So it snaps shut. You can see here I've got the Surefire Sidekick as a light and then this little sharpening system. So we've got three different um, star bits and then I've got you know where you put the star bit in to crank it down. And then you've got ceramic and then you've got a, a diamond sharpener. So you basically hold it like this. So just if I want to touch up my knives or my axe out in the field, the Surefire Sidekick, got a couple different outputs here. So that's nice to have an extra light. I do have an extra headlamp I'll show you in a second. And this guy, I love this thing so much. I put some instant coffee in here, which we'll take out into the field. And then this is my little spice kit. So I've got garlic, I've got salt, I've got uh, brown sugar, and then I've got Old Bay here. And these are these are glass, they come with a cork, so you gotta be, be careful with them. Um, but yeah, just snap this, and now it's nice and organized. You could take those out and put them in a different um, system, but I like that, and we'll use those spices when we head out into the woods. All right, so over here, this system right here is in a S3 Sokoa bag. Open it up and inside I've got cordage. So there's a little spool of cordage. You can put a little carabiner around there. There's a blade to cut it. It's not 550 cord, but it is strong, double, you know, like multi, multi wrapped cord. And then you could put something in here, which I may throw a little fishing kit in there. You know, some uh, fishing line, a couple other lures maybe or something in there. So there's some cordage. And what is in this S3 Sokoa bag is kind of one of those old school um, hammocks. So we'll set this up when we're out there in the woods. Nice to have something small and lightweight to, uh, to yeah, just to rest on. So that's the actual, this is part of the hammock down here. It's kind of like a jungle hammock. So not as comfortable maybe as one of those full nylon ones, um, but lightweight and definitely breathable. So that's in this bag. Here you can see I've got a emergency, it's sort of like a tarp and, and blanket all kind of mixed in one, but thicker and more durable than one of those Mylar blankets. The last bushcraft outing I did for my last kit, I'd found that Mylar blankets like, yeah, it's good in an emergency, but if I wanted something a little bit more sturdy, here's a step up. I will be moving to some tarps for future systems or future bags, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. So. Just got this, I ran about 12 bucks. Um, I think it's from like Coughlin's, it's not some super expensive brand, but it does take up a lot of space in here. So that's something to note that you may wanna just keep that in mind. If you're using this, you may wanna use a backpack because it does fill up a lot of space in the, in the, uh, in the haversack. Lord and Field cover, leather cover for the uh, little journal that I have in here. So I can write notes, take notes, journal, whatever I wanna do while I'm out in the field. You can see there are two little storage sections here in the back, one and two. Obviously, this little loop goes over the button. I wanna open these up so I can get access to them. But before we go in there, let me show you one last thing, which is this. Let's see if that bag cannot fall over for me. So this is from Exotac, and it's basically a gear roll. 
and you can store lots of different items in this thing. They have it in a couple different colors. Let's see if I can get this open on camera here. There we go. Uh, very solid and secure. Once you get things in there and you know rolled up, I don't think you're gonna have any issues with it, you know, falling out or anything like that. But you got hook and loop. This opens like this. That opens like this. This is hook and loop. And then you're gonna basically unroll it this way. And you can see I've got gear up here and I've got items also in this gray section as well. So let me readjust the camera. We'll take a look at that. So here's the Exotac uh, gear roll, but essentially for me, it's a fire organization kit. I do have one of these, which is like the Exotac um, Zippo lighter. I haven't used this thing in a while. I can tell you my consistent experience with anything like these type of Zippo lighters is that you're going to get a spark pretty regularly, but even with O-rings and stuff, it just, yeah, stuff leaks. So um, not a huge fan. It's not this particular product from Exotac, but Zippo lighters, even if they have a way to seal it, in general, I find they're, they're eventually going to leak. So you got to check in on these regularly. I don't think they're bad, but you got to check regularly, and I would always have a backup to this type of lighter. So that's in there. Um, and I'll fill it up before we head out into the woods. I do have a, a fire steel from Exotac. I've got a couple kind of, I don't know if they're, I want to say paper based or paper looking fire starters. This is from a Spartan Fire, I think it's called. And this is from uh, my friends at Pro Camp Tech. So get a fire started there. Got two little lighters in here. Got a magnesium bar and a fire steel there. Down here, I've got just a basic set of matches, but in a plastic bag. Open this up. You can see I've got a bunch of fat wood here to use. In here, I've got, oh yeah, this isn't actually, this is a fire steel, but these are actually, um, there's actually an arrowhead in here that you can attach to something. This is from Lord and Field as well. Great item to just throw on your neck. You know, this actually, you can use this. I gotta, I gotta unloosen it, but this has got a cutting edge because it's got, you know, it's, a, it's an arrowhead, so you can use it to cut and also to start fire. So that's kind of a cool thing. You can see a little tin here in this one when I push this out. This is from Pro Camp Tech, and it's some more of their fire starter, some basically some chopped up fat rope stick, one of their original products. Here, let's see if I've got, yeah, I've got a stone in here. This is kind of fun. This is legit flint and steel. So flint and steel, if you want to try that, that's a fun way to get a fire started. And then down here at the end, I've just got this little basic folding knife, again, from Lord and Field. You can see I've used this to strike strike um, fire steels with the back. You can see that's a little beat up. But also, if you want to cut up some of the, the fat wood or other things, now you've got a little blade in your kit. So that's my, uh, my fire kit for bushcraft bag number two. All right, back into the bag here, these last two little pockets. So back here, I've got some tin foil. Always good to have that available for cooking or whatever you want. And then I've got this, which is really cool. My last kit, I had a Wazoo Survival um, bandana. This is also from Wazoo Survival, but this is um, edible and medicinal plants. So that is cool. You know, I always like to have one of these for, for having a bandana or shamok scarf is always helpful for um, you know, making a splint, collecting items, whatever it might be. This is, uh, this is a cool thing. And you could see like medicinal cook, tea, cordage and weaving, vitamin C. And then they label each one of these plants for the little purposes. So, um, yeah, I just think that's really cool. It's just kind of a neat, a neat, uh, product that they came up with. I love the, the multi-use aspect of, uh, gear from Wazoo Survival. And then here we've got a very compact headlamp. This is from BioLight. And I'll show you right here, it does recharge on the side. And then you've got a couple different outputs. I don't want to blind the camera here when I turn it on. But you got red, you got the normal, you got the flashing, that flashing. And I think we might have a couple different outputs here. Yeah. So it's got that infinity loop, goes down, goes all the way back up, and then click it through and it'll go off. So there's my headlamp for when I'm out in the woods. I did mention already that I've got a strop. Gotta be careful that this doesn't get soaked in the rain. So I'm probably gonna put this inside, but I just threw that on. It's got a little, a little clasp there so I can do that. Over to this side, I've got probably the most classic bushcraft saw out there. Baco Laplander, not super expensive, but a great, great saw. Does have a little lanyard there. Had this for a long time, still working awesome. I do have a whistle, you know, just an emergency whistle. Good to have anytime you head out into the woods, just a way to get somebody's attention. 
This does have a little clip on the back too, which is kind of neat. I like that. I've got a clean canteen bottle and there's your cap. And then it also has, just like my first kit, this one has a nesting cup as well. So slides in like that. These nesting cups are great. Got a handle. They've got, see if this one has it. Yeah. You can see measurements on there. So that's what that system looks like. This is from the Pathfinder School. I think this is just one that I bought online or got in a kit somewhere or got from a, you know, a battle box or something like that. Got a little bag here. I'll show you that in a second. Over here in the side pouch, which is here, right? So two little pouches here and a side pouch here. And then there is a side pouch on this side as well. I don't think I have, oh yeah, I've got a couple things in there. I'll go to that in a second, but I do want to show you this. So I've got some hooks and some nails and these are great items to keep in a bushcraft kit because you can hang stuff up on a tree. If you've got hefty enough hooks, you can actually put them into a tree and then set up your hammock if you want to do that. So I just want to try these out. I think these are going to be an underrated item when you're out in the woods. Over on this side, a couple more items. So I do have a legit compass, All right? So got the mirror, got the compass, got just good to have a compass when you're out in the woods. And again, probably not going to use this every single time, but good to have a solid compass when you're out in the woods. And that's it for that side. Last item is kind of interesting. So let me grab it. This is a little bag that I got again from the Army Navy store. And I'm like, oh, it's cool. I can like collect wild edibles, stuff like that. And then I looked at it in depth the other day and realized, oh, this is kind of morbid. Deceased military personnel, personal effects, their name, their battle area, serial number, place of burial. Anyhow, that's a little dark, but it is a nice little simple bag that you can collect items. And it was probably like two bucks at, a, uh, at the Army Surplus store. Here's a look at the gloves I had on the back. These are from a company called Truck. Not super familiar with them, but I've worn these a bit. Very comfortable. And um, yeah, they're a good one. They're a good uh, brand that I've seen, that I've used so far at least. And uh, they are goat skin. So yeah, just a nice, nice set of gloves. Good to have something to protect your hands out in the woods. So there you have a look at bushcraft bag number two. And we're gonna head out into the woods and test this. Uh, probably not today, maybe the next couple days or so. Um, I'm going to do more testing of the gear. I felt like in the last video, I used a bunch of the gear, but some of it I just didn't use. So I want to use more of this, set up a more, I don't know, significant bushcraft setting and get out there. I'll probably cook a nice meal or something. Um, but yeah, some of this gear right off the bat, I'm like, I would have that in any kit, like a set of gloves, probably almost any kit, unless it's really small, I'll have a set of gloves. But what are the ones that, um, what are the ones that, you know, I'm like, yeah, I might use that. I might not use that. We'll see as we go along. Um, couple of thoughts on this super inexpensive bag to get that Polish bread, bread bag for like seven to 10 bucks. Great deal. And I think it's an awesome bag. I actually had one a while ago and a guy who I made friends with via YouTube was like, that's a really cool bag. I was like, dude, here you can have it. I sent one to him and I went and picked up another one cause I liked it so much. So definitely a thumbs up on that bag right off the bat. Um, this is a more extensive fire kit than, than it's needed but I like to get out there and work on different skills, test different ways of starting fire. So that's why I have that. And um, yeah, I can tell you I'm a little, I don't know, concerned is too strong a word, but the size of that like tarp blanket thing, it's just, it's pretty bulky. So that's when you have a, when you have a haversack, you're like, okay, I'm limited on space. What do I definitely need? What do I, what do I maybe I want to use? I'm not sure if I'm going to use. So we'll see about that when we get out into the woods, but let me hear your thoughts and feedback. If you've used any of this gear, if you like it, you don't like it, let's get that discussion started. Again, the first bushcraft bag and the first test of the bushcraft bag, those videos are down in the description section uh, below. You can click on the links and a full list of all these items with links down below in the description section. If you want to pick one up or you're like, oh yeah, I've always been wanting to get one and now I know where I can find it. So yeah, you can check that out. But let's keep the discussion going and make sure you stay tuned because we're going to be doing our test of bushcraft bag number two very soon that'll be coming up and i think the next two bags in a row are going to be full backpacks so even more gear in those future bags but like i said let's get the discussion started in the comment section now all right guys thanks as always for checking out the videos here on youtube please subscribe to everyday tactical vids if you haven't done so already like us on facebook follow us on twitter check us out on instagram tumblr and vero as well more videos coming soon take care and by the way i do know that twitter is now called x later guys